Thanks, Stephen. I'm pinch hitting for uh, the MGA president, Gene Bernstein, who could not be with us today. Before I make a few comments about the MGA and the MGA Foundation, I'd like to pay special thanks to Kate Keller, Kevin Pine, Gene Westmoreland, and our executive director, Jay Matola, for all that they've done and do every year in preparation for this meeting. Would you all stand, please? You know, it's great to be a volunteer for an association, but I think that you all know who does the work, and it's really staff. We're fortunate tonight and today to have probably an additional 10 more staff members that are here. Uh, I see Doug and Greg and uh, Jeannie and Zach, and uh, you know, this is your association, and, and I hope these are your staff members. So I hope you'd consider today, or when you see them at a different event or a different tournament, you'd thank them for their effort, for their passion and their dedication. Uh, they're amazing people, and they've done just an amazing job for all of us. 2011 has been a very exciting year for the MGA, particularly in the area of communications. Good segue. In May, we unveiled our new logo, the first significant brand change in almost 30 years, followed by the launch of our vastly improved website in June. We love the modern look of both of these and hope you will also. Late in the summer, we introduced a new mobile app, a new mobile website, excuse me, and a mobile app called My MGA. How many of you have that on your phones today? Okay. How many of you are going to have it on your phones tomorrow? <laughs> Excellent. So as Jay said, this allows our golfers to post their scores, check the results, enter tournaments, and read the Met Golfer, all from their Android, their iPhone, or their iPad devices. My MGA is free, and we hope you all download it and give us your feedback. I particularly like it because I can see every score, and once in a while I'll shoot a great score and it seems to stay in my handicap for like 10 years, and I love to see when that thing's finally going to drop off. So uh, it gives you pretty good access to that. Uh, and as Jay mentioned, in 2012 these apps will contain even more useful features uh, and will bring work on new apps and designed specifically for the MGA clubs. The biggest and maybe the most exciting part of the MGA this year, the new MGA, is the expansion of our headquarters in Ellensburg, New York. We just finished a new 6,500 foot wing, which houses the MGA and the MGA Foundation. We're ex very excited about this new addition, which allows not only the MGA to expand its overall operation, but it gave our other resident associations, the WMGA, the Westchester Golf Association, the Met PGA, some much needed room to grow, and we're delighted that the Met club managers and the Met golf course superintendents now have their own permanent offices at Golf Central. We invite all the member clubs to stop by and visit the headquarters at any time. We are literally two blocks off of Route 287, right at exit four. So please stop by, we'd love to give you a tour. The tournament department was also part of the new MGA initiative and rolled out a new championship this year called the Masters. Pretty unique. Designed for players 65 and over. I think, Jay, if you, if you win that tournament, you get an exemption to Augusta, is that right? Something like that. Sadly, the weather issues have plagued so much of the latter part of the season forced us to, to postpone its debut until next year. But we're very excited about this special event that will take place at the Country Club of Fairfield next year, which is one of the areas, Met, Met area, great golf courses. Weather issues aside, and there were plenty of them this season, we had some thrilling championships in 2011. 
I got to witness the dramatic playoff at Somerset Hills for the Ike, won by Tommy McDonough. We had an inspired final match at the Met Amateur, won by Mike Miller. An emotional win at the Met Open at Sleepy Hollow, Sleepy Hollow by Tyler Hall, just to name a few. Witnessing some of these events firsthand has given me great appreciation for all the hard work done by the tournament committee director, Brian Mahoney and his staff. Brian, are you in the room? He's probably getting us all organized for this afternoon. Their total commitment to providing players with the best possible tournament experience under any condition is really amazing. We know we could not conduct these events without the great support of our clubs and our courses, and we thank all of you for your support and hospitality in hosting MGA events. We really have an amazing venues. All of you clubs are so generous with your clubs, and we are all so appreciative of the opportunity to play there. Even with all these new activities going on at the MGA, behind the scenes, the MGA staff continued its dedication to the association's core services, many of which you're familiar with. The handicapping, the course rating, the, edu the educational programs like today's President's Council, and our great magazine, The Met Golfer, which, in a difficult environment for magazines, continued to set the standard for golf association publications. You also have information in your packets about two highly successful insurance programs for clubs and club employees. And we'll continue, and we continue to work with the local super golf course superintendents association on educational programs to help turf grass development. All of these services and programs are the core of what the MGA has been about for the past 114 years. And these programs will continue to receive the focus and the attention of our staff and our executive committee. The MGA's charitable foundation which has done so much to help and grow and introduce the game to young people over the past decade has continued to flourish in spite of the economic challenges that we all face. All of our critically important initiatives like Golf Works, the First Tee, Caddy Academies, Junior Championships, and educational programs continue to thrive. These junior programs provided instruction, life skills training, employment opportunities, and meaningful competitive experience to thousands of young people. I had the pleasure of attending many of our foundation events this year, and I can tell you that all you have to do is look at the excited faces on the young people who attend to know that we are making a difference. Clearly the highlight of the year of the foundation was our participation in the gala event last week at the American Museum of Natural History, celebrating the 10th anniversary for the first tee of Metropolitan New York. We had more than 500 people attend the gala event that featured Mayor Bloomberg and former President Bill Clinton as guest speakers. It was truly a cause for celebration that in just 10 short years, our first tea chapter has grown from one site at Mashalu Golf Course in the Bronx to seven sites and 14 affiliate sites in 2011. The first tea of Metropolitan New York is now the nation's largest and most active first tea chapter and one of the most successful youth development programs in the country. We hope all the club leaders recognize the importance of the work that the MGA Foundation is doing in helping to create the next generation of golfers. And we'll hope to continue, we hope that you will continue your support of those efforts. In closing, I think the President's Council is a great example of what the MGA is about. Bringing together club leaders to talk about the game, and their clubs, and working together with you to make sure golf gets through these tough times and the game's future remains bright.